Hi Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. In today's CCNA video pop quiz, I'm going to present you with a practice exam question in about 20 seconds or so, and then we're going to take on the answers, go through them one by one, and do that, of course, on live Cisco routers. I want to mention one thing about the free full hour of my CCNA video boot camp and how to access that, because there's been a slight change on the location at udemy.com. This is the main screen that you're going to see, of course, obviously. And thanks to all of you who have written these great five-star reviews. We're very appreciative. As the lectures are being listed, I don't make the first two lectures free. I make a couple of bigger OSPF ones free. So if you just go down to the OSPF section, you'll see a little red label free on those two. And it's about 70 minutes of really good OSPF training. And even if that's not in your budget right now, you're not planning to make the purchase, you definitely want to go out there and watch those two videos because it don't cost nothing. Now, let's get to that practice exam question. Which of these terms describes a default static route? I've also got another bonus question for you that's not on the board. So stick around even if you think you know the answer to this one because we'll go through some good tips here as we go through the answers. Is it A, it's used for any other route in the table, B, it's used only if no other match exists in the routing table, C, it's used if the dynamic routing protocol used to discover the route is not running on that router, D, generally created with an AD higher than that of the primary path, so it will not be used unless that primary path leaves the table. Now, before we go to the bonus question, we're going to go through these actually one by one because this is a good exam tip for you. Because it happens to everybody, it happens to me, and I've been taking these exams for about 15 years, you're always going to get a question in there somewhere where you just go, you know, I'm not exactly sure. And that's okay. You know, it's going to happen. We don't have to get perfect scores on the exams. But what I've always found does also help is if you eliminate the answers that you know are wrong to begin with. And what I'll do is take the little dry erase board in this case, and I would write A, B, C, D, and just say, okay, you know, I know this one's wrong, or I know this one's wrong. And that does focus your mind a little bit. Then you can just look at the remaining answers and go from there. Now let's go from top to bottom in this one, because all of my questions are the dreaded choose all that apply. It's used before any other route in the table, hence the name default. I put that one there because that's what I thought before I started studying Cisco a long time ago or studying routing. Because when you hear the term default, you do think, oh, okay, you know, it's the default setting. It's the first thing to be used. Uh, but in this case, that is totally incorrect. So we're going to go ahead and just remove that from the board. Now, choice B, it's used only if no other match exists in the routing table. That is a dead-on description of a default static route. Now, if we go down to C, this is what I call a nonsense answer, because you might have looked at that and said, huh? You know, or did he leave a word out? And we get those on exams every once in a while. Well, if the dynamic routing protocol used to discover the route isn't running on that router, you wouldn't have the route in the first place, the dynamic route. So we can definitely get rid of that one. Now, D does describe a kind of static route, and this is the kind of thing you want to watch on the exam. Don't go through the questions too quickly. D describes a floating static route. And on YouTube, I've got one shorter video. It's about three minutes long. And then I've got like a three-part series. It's like 20 minutes of free training on floating static routes. So if you're a little fuzzy on what those are, you haven't gotten to them in your studies yet, you definitely want to check out my YouTube channel for that information. So right then and there, we come down to B, and that was the only correct answer. It's used only if no match exists in the routing table. Now, let's assume that we're going to write a default static route, or we've been asked to, and we're going to use the exit interface serial zero to do so. That's where we want all traffic sent out if the default static route comes into play. So how would we do that? What's the deal? Well, let's bring up the live equipment. And also, what's the routing table code going to be for a default static route? The complete one. And you know that's a hint if I'm saying the complete one. Well, let's get started with writing it to begin with. We always start with IP route, just like we do with any other type of static route. And the next value we're going to be asked for is that destination prefix. That's what we need. That's going to be all zeros. The next value we need is the destination prefix mask. That's, only, that's actually the only option. And we're going to put all zeros for that as well. I always like to ask about this once in a while to make sure everybody sees it, because when I first looked at this, 
you know, you're looking at that even on exam day, and you're thinking, really, with all zeros, can that be right? Yes, it is right. Well, the next value you put is the next hop IP address or the local router's exit interface. And if we're going to use serial zero for that, that's what we're going to do. And that would indeed be the full command. That is going to give us our default static route. And if we run show IP route, you're going to see that the complete syntax, excuse me, the complete routing table code is S asterisk. It's not just S. Because if you see the letter S, and I know it's buried up here somewhere, there it is, that's for static. But if it's a default static route, you're going to see that code and this one, candidate default. So a lot of good stuff there for static routing. And I want to hope, I tell you that I hope you'll join me on Twitter, YouTube, our blog, and on Facebook, because I'm doing one of these questions five to seven times a week now. It's a great refresher, and I hope to see you out there. Again, thanks for watching today's video. I'm Chris Bryan, and thanks for making TBA part of your Cisco Certification Success Story.